Good day and welcome back to Spartan Entertainment and Electronics. I'm your host Ryan. On June 18th, 2020, Electronic Arts did their Play Live event showcasing updates to existing franchises as well as announcing new games. The event live streamed for about an hour and most of the EA staff were broadcasting from home. Before we jump into the announcements and my reactions, please take a minute to hit that subscribe button. I post new content at least once a week and would love for you to be here for it. If you like this video, please smash that thumbs up button and share this video with someone you think might be interested in what I'm doing. The live stream kicked off with a welcome speech from EA CEO Andrew Wilson. His address to first responders was fantastic. I don't think it's said often enough. The staff appreciation was also a nice touch. I like that he acknowledges that EA will attempt to get more diversity into the company and brought attention to a need to work on inclusion. Today we're here because of the power of games. Games bring us together. They can make our lives better. They can teach us. They can provide escape and self-expression. And most of all, games can be fun. All of us at Electronic Arts believe in that. And it's why we're excited to get up every morning to make great experiences for all of you. So thanks for being here with us. And now, let's get into some games. Greg Miller's a fantastic host, and I'm glad they were able to get him to do it. Anyone want to take me out? I'm hungry like the world. You should smile more. They jumped into the game starting with Respawn Entertainment and Apex Legends. I had hoped for a Titanfall 3 game announcement, but apparently I'm still going to be waiting for that. The announcement of Lost Treasures made me realize I really should give Apex Legends a try as I love the Titanfall universe. Adventurers, Raiders, Explorers, they risk everything in search of fame, fortune, and answers. If you find what they're looking for, <laughs> but if they survive, they might walk away with lost treasures. As far as lost treasures, it looks like it may be a bit of a clone of the vault event that Warzone did last season. Maybe. That's my take on it anyway. I appreciate that part of EA's inclusion plan is to make as many games cross-play compatible as possible. I think this is a great move for gamers everywhere. I have several friends that play on PS4, and I mostly play on PC or Xbox One, so I'm excited about being able to play with my friends, especially with games like Star Wars Squadrons coming. I'm also excited to hear announcements of a lot of games coming to Switch. The Switch is a great console and needs some more love. Hold on to your holograms! <laughs> the Sims community video was moving. I really appreciated it. Although Sims isn't a game that I play, it was awesome to hear what this game means to people. The only real announcement coming from The Sims was that it is coming to Steam, but EA had announced that their properties are moving to Steam a little while ago, with EA Access being available on that platform this fall. As a side note, I think the move of EA onto Steam may be a nail in the coffin for the Epic Game Store. Fun fact, I have EA Access on Xbox, and it's almost identical to EA Origin Access Basic. So I think if you're going to get EA Access, you might be better off to go through Origin, as they offer a little bit more for the same price. Let's discuss. What do you think? Will major publishers like EA moving only to Steam spell the end for the Epic Games Store? The next bit was a big disappointment for me, Command & Conquer Remastered Collection. It was merely a run-through of the launch trailer, and an announcement that it is available on Steam. I was hoping for an announcement of a new Command & Conquer game, much like a new Titanfall game. Oh well, hopefully next year. It is nice to hear about all the EA titles coming to Steam and Switch, and this is huge for Switch players. They jumped into EA Originals at this point, and it was interesting. They announced three games throughout this segment. The first, coming from Hazelight Studios, It Takes Two. A couple of things with this title that I am fairly excited about. The first being co-op play. I'm always keeping my eye out for games that my girlfriend and I can enjoy together, and this one looks really promising on its cooperative play. I'm also really intrigued by the visual style they are using for this game, and I look forward to seeing more information on this title. Two of the three original titles are expected sometime in 2021. The new game, It Takes Two, is a co-op action-adventure platformer that will blow your f***ing mind away. 
The story starts out with a small family. Cody, May, that's the parents, and then Rose, the little daughter. So Cody and May are about to separate. Rose doesn't want them to divorce. So she creates two dolls out of wood and clay, and these dolls magically come alive and actually controls both Cody and May. And you could say you're almost controlling their emotions. You're all, all, almost playing their emotions. There's even levels where we're actually making a mechanic for their emotions. So again, marrying the story and the mechanics. And I think for the players, that's gonna feel very new, different, and unique. They haven't played anything like this before. It Takes Two is a crazy roller coaster ride that doesn't really have an ending. It has an ending, but that ending is that the roller coaster crashes and you fly into the sky and get up into space. And when you're in space, you're like, what the f am I doing up here? And then maybe you get back to, to Earth again. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. It takes two, actually. The second studio we heard from with the new intellectual property is Zoink Games, showing off Lost in Random. I am really intrigued by this game. The story concept has really caught my interest, and I like the visual direction they are heading with this new IP. Described by creator Olaf Redmalm as straight out of a gothic fairy tale, out of a beautiful twisted dream. I am very excited to see more information on this title as time progresses closer to its release. Welcome to Random. The world of random bends with the roll of one dice. A dice that has ruled this kingdom for generations. Transforming the fates of people just like you. But what if I told you there is another dice with the power to change everything? Now, my friend, it's your turn to roll, to play the odds, and break the curse of random. Well, well. You can't have the sweet without the sour. No, Dicey. They should be scared of us. Right? The last original shown off here comes from Final Strike Games and will be available July 14th of this year, Rocket Arena. Honestly, I'm very underwhelmed with this one as it looks like it is merely trying to be take player base from Overwatch. It has potential, but it appears to be a copycat, which is unfortunate. I hope this isn't the case, but I didn't see anything in this introduction to make me think otherwise. All I could think during the announced trailer was, is this Overwatch? The art style appears to be remarkably similar. The character types are similar. The only difference I am noticing is rockets instead of just regular guns. Here's the announced trailer. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Rockets away! Let's kick this into gear. The trophy will soon be mine. Have you ever wondered why life is so good on Crater? Sure, we've got the beautiful beaches. Cannonball! Quality public transportation. <laughs> and exotic destinations. Another victory! The people are courteous and friendly. Jolly good for me. And uh, always happy to help their fellow citizens. Are you leaving already? But the real reason life is so good? We've got rockets! Here to 
to rock it. I'm having a blast! <laughs> After all of that, they jumped into what I came for, Star Wars Squadrons. They started on an interview with Ian Frazier, creative director at Motive Studios. I must say, after hearing about his love of Star Wars, it gives me hope that Battlefront and now Squadrons are in good hands, and it is encouraging to hear that this is a passion project for the team. I don't know about you, but I am super jealous of his office, and I want everything in it. It really seems like EA has learned their lesson since Battlefront 2 and are trying to repair their relationship with gamers. I was overly excited to hear about the real ace pilot stuff they teased for Endgame. You know, in real life, being a pilot is, is hard. It takes skill. And that's something that you'll see throughout the game. You know, as you start off playing, it's pretty straightforward. Fly around, shoot your lasers. But as you get deeper into it, you start learning how to divert energy from your lasers to your, to your engines, how to shift your shields from the front to the back to cover your butt in a dogfight. Or at the higher levels of skill, you can do really crazy stuff. Like you can boost your engines, fly ahead, cut them off, whip around 180 and shoot a missile off your own tail while drifting backwards. Like real ace pilot stuff. And that's, that's really where we have a lot of fun with the game. Yay crossplay and yay full VR support. This game will be the reason I be buy a VR headset. I was really excited to see some gameplay footage, and when they finally got to that part of the interview, it was disappointing as it seemed more like a game engine demo than gameplay footage. Additionally, most of the information they went over was covered on the game's webpage, so there was really no new information in this segment. They went a little deeper into what the single player campaign will look like, which sounds interesting and I am excited to play it but it just seems like it will be a tutorial for the multiplayer that will be the flagship for this title. The level of detail shown off in the cockpits looks amazing. I look forward to playing this in 4K. They did reveal the four classes of ships, fighter, interceptor, support, and bomber, and the launch ships included in those classes. The upgrade path, which is all advertised as in-game unlocks, looks massive. Over 50 options should generate quite a bit of play your way options. I don't know if I will play a lot of the dogfights mode, but I am hyped through the roof for fleet battles. I like multi-staged, objective-based modes, and this one also includes Star Wars ships, so it's just an all-around win for me. It is a copy of a Battlefront 2 mode, but that is fine by me, as that's my favorite mode on Battlefront 2 as well. A match could be anywhere from 5 to 45 minutes, which helps keep it interesting. I like the idea of the social hub to plan your missions before jumping in. At the end of the day, I am going to be buying this game. I enjoyed the VR mission in Battlefront and wanted more of it at that time. If this is the expanded version of that one mission, then just take my money EA. Just take my money. The last couple of things we got to see came from the EA Sports realm. I love that they are still using the intro, EA Sports, it's in the game. So many memories for me from that intro. I like that they are looking at next gen sports titles. I haven't bought an EA Sports title in quite a few years however because I don't agree with their purchase structure. What I want is to pay $80 Canadian for the title once, and then pay an annual price, maybe $40, to update to the most current features and rosters. That makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is having to pay $80 every year for marginal improvements and mostly minor new features year over year. I don't understand why people are supporting that system. Realistically, if you buy a new title every three years instead of every year for full price, that is about the only way to really notice an improvement or significant changes. I really think EA needs to reevaluate their distribution structure for their sports titles. That's my two bits. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I don't want to feel it all. EA Sports it's in the game. EA's Chief Studio Officer, Laura Mele, had no major announcements, just some teasers, but I am intrigued. Also, I want that lightsaber sitting on her desk in the background. The first teaser was about Criterion Games, developers of Burnout and Need for Speed games. It appears as though a new Need for Speed game may have been teased. I don't think it's a Burnout game based on the manufacturer logos and wrap on the cars, which leaves me to think that it is a next-gen Need for Speed title. The next tease was from Bioware, the studio that brought us Mass Effect and Anthem. I don't recognize the property teased from Bioware, so if you recognize this property, please let me know in the comments. Next they jumped into DICE, and clearly a new battlefield was teased. 
it looks like it will be back in a World War II set piece. Motive was the last tease in this clip, and I'm not sure what they are teasing here either. It's not Star Wars, and that's all I can see. All I want to hear from Motive right now is Star Wars Squadrons. The last announcement, although I am sure this is exciting to some, passed me by quickly as I have never been excited about the skate games. If you are a skate fan, then how excited are you for this announcement? They have announced a skate game is in production, and I anticipate it will launch late 2021 or early 2022. I think this was a really solid live stream from EA, and there are a few titles I am excited for like Lost and Random and Star Wars Squadrons, but it was also disappointing as there was no new Titanfall or Command and Conquer announcements. And the Squadrons footage being more game engine than game play was a bummer for me. Let's discuss down in the comments any announcements from EA that you're excited about. Will you be buying Squadrons? Was there anything you wish they had have included in this live stream? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.